Hi everyone, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd and as you can see, well, I've got my newest acquisition here, which is my 81 Capri and my 81 Mustang right here. And I wanted to recreate one of the videos I did a few years ago. So, if you can look far enough back, you would see this car actually, I think it was over there. No, actually no, I had a park like this, so that's right. And then I have my convertible over here. And I just basically went through both the cars and explaining some of the differences between them. And these ones, it's surprisingly because of how similar these two are compared to those other two, to be honest. So anyways, let's go through it and honestly, let's check out my newest acquisition here first and then we'll move on to my 81 Mustang, which is named, affectionately named Stitch. Now, I haven't come up with a name for the Capri yet, you know, like there's some thoughts I had bounced around my mind, but as you can see, you know, this car is, this is a mostly original car. So other than the hood, which we did swap, and it actually does have, um, you know, four hood pins on it. It's how we got it, to be honest. It's pretty good. There's a little bit of a bend here in the hood, but this hood doesn't have any rust in it. That's why we went with this one. Also, it's actually functional for the RS Scoop, which is cool because it was modified like that. And like, what's really cool, because this car, it's a 1981 Mercury Capri. This is the luxury version of the Mustang. This one is basically has the same options as what my Mustang does, except for a couple of things. Like, obviously this being a hatchback, it also has this rear wiper, which was an option, um, very rare option. Not very many cars you'll see with that. The notchbacks never got that. Um, this one only has a single exhaust, even though it's dual tips, it's just a single exhaust at the back of it with a Magnaflow muffler. Well, that one has duals with um, GT tips and a um, Pro Flow or Flow Pro, something like that, mufflers. Now this one, there is a little bit of rust right here, which I, I am concerned about that rust, to be honest. Um, and even there's a little bit here, I might be able to grind those two spots and coat that. This, however, will require some actual cutting, but you know, for now, it's gonna stay as it is. But, and we can take a look actually, now both the cars are a little dirty inside, but you know, that's, that's just the thing. Um, except, oh, did I? Oh no, I didn't, okay, good. It seems like, um, sorry about that. So what's interesting though, is because this is not the original key set in the car. Um, so this is not the original key, which is interesting. Cause if you look at this and go, wait, that's your door key? Yeah, it is. Watch. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't like to unlock that easy. There we go. But you can just listen to how nice that is opening. Like just close, open, right? Where this one like has never been taken apart in here. Like this has all been intact since... 1981. Actually, something I want to check. When was this one actually built? So this one was built at ah, June of 1981. So this one's actually newer than my Mustang, because my Mustang, I think, is March or maybe May. So, um, but anyways, like you can take a look at this interior, just how immaculate condition it is. You know, there's just a little bit of fading right there. And one little tear and a couple little tears in the piping. But that's about it. Like, it's in such phenomenal shape. It could be detailed. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it is a GS Gia, so it does have the uh, Gia wheel. And, um, you know, with the Capris, actually, they have this cool-looking um, gates around. It's just, it's a different style than what's in the Mustang. Um, but anyways, let's go check out under the hood of this thing. And show you what's what under here because these both have something very much in common under their their hoods so here we have and it's been 
a little bit detailed under here, not majorly, because I only did it on a car wash. And there's still more to clean on it, to be honest, because it's just, I didn't want feel like spending 40 bucks in one go on washing this thing at the car wash. But this is the 200 inline six. And this is pretty much, other than deleted emissions, this is bone stock. Bone stock under here. Still has the original, actually that is the original coil. You can see it down here. You know, original coil here. Um, you still have, that looks like the original oil pressure sender unit and the temperature sender as well. These are new plug wires and stuff, but that's about it. It has a different carb on it, but still off of another uh, 81. That, that one's a Fairmont. And like I was talking about before, though, is with this hood. See, it's function. It's fully functional because it goes out there and you and those cuts in the front of it. So, but as you can see, it's not actually feeding cold air to the uh, carburetor. I can change that. Like if I am doing other things, I could actually just flip the air cleaner lid upside down and it could be actually be feeding it cold air that way, but that'll only be for certain occasions. For just daily driving, it's gonna keep the stock sort of air box on it. Um, but now, well here, let's just go to the back in here and start up. And here we go, let's just get in it. And start her up. traded my convertible for this car and while it is in worse shape than the convertible was it's a more usable car for me because I can actually use this as a daily now and I can actually park my uh, 81 Mustang a little more because she's uh, a little more special to me so um, but like and what's cool about the Capris as well like they've got unique taillights rear bumper cover is the same as the Mustang however the front bumper cover is obviously different and it obviously has a different grill and stuff like that as well. Like, I love these taillights. I do want to put a set of these in this. Although, I might actually do a full bubble back Capri uh, bumper cover and taillights. We'll see for sure. But here is my, you know, 81. It should have a pace car scoop up here. But sadly, that thing, um, I need to repair it still. So, it's still one of those things that need to be done. Now, what's cool actually, because, okay, this car has... A car light windshield in it but it does not have the sun strip however this car has a car light windshield in it but it has the sun strip so which is really cool and like it's got a couple little rock chips that i want to get fixed just these two right here but that'll be in the next couple of weeks i get those fixed and it's no big deal um i just need to get a little more cash together before i do that but anyway so this is an 81 Mustang. And now, this front end design was from 79 to 82. And uh, this one being an 81, like it, it does have some interesting things. Like, because even under the hood, it's got the exact same motor that the other one has over there. And you can just see, you know, my kind of custom touches that I've done to it. Like, you can see the, the tritone on the sides and stuff. And it's got this pace car rear bumper cover. But, like, you can take a look at these tail lights, right? They are different. Um, and if you're wondering what this badge is, it's not mine. I got this off of my friend Travis. He actually has um, classic LEDs on Instagram. Uh, that is him. So if you want to check him out, you certainly can. So, um, yeah, anyways, and like he does a bunch of uh, custom fab like LEDs and stuff for a lot of different vintage vehicles. Um, 
if we take a look inside, it's a little dirty in here, I apologize. This was my daily driver for a while, and I just never really got the opportunity to clean it. I could have cleaned it today, but it was quite warm, so. This one happens to have different seats in it. These are not the original seats. These are out of a, a uh, 83, I believe, notchback. Um, they're like GT seats, though, because you can see, uh, well, the GT was never made in a notchback, but you can get GT options, essentially. So it's got power lumbar. This is your uh, adjustable bolsters, right? You can see it moving. It's really cool. Um, on both sides, it's like that. And you can see, see what I mentioned earlier? How different it is for uh, the fake wooden here. And now it's got a different steering wheel. This was uh, a different style steering wheel. And what's interesting is, because I don't know if that was the base steering wheel or what. I haven't seen too many of those. But as well, this is the base door panel here. Right? With a straight across thing. And it doesn't have very much design in the door panel itself. Very simplistic. Um, however, if we take a look under the hood, you will see... The good old 200 inline six. Ah, I should have paused it, but that's okay. Excuse me. There we go. So 200 inline six got an Optima battery, which I was having issues with. Turns out I left the radio on. My fault. Um, because it kept killing the battery. I'm like, why is it killing the battery? It makes no sense. Understandable now. So this one has, you know, like basically everything you see under here has been like done. You know, like I've painted the motor, although I need to paint it again, but because um, I didn't really do a good job of it last time. And, you know, it's got, like, a upgraded rad. And, you know, like, the valve cover, nice aluminum fin valve cover. It's got a two-barrel carb on it with an adapter and all this different stuff. And it's just really cool. Like, super saw coil down there. And this one, basically everything you see under here, for the most part, is, has been changed. Except for the master cylinder and brake booster. So it's interesting because that one has a new brake booster and master cylinder. Like, you can actually see it over there. Is that... This car stops a lot better than what this car does. Even though this car has like relatively new brakes as well, but just because it's a little wore out with the brake booster master cylinder, so it just doesn't stop quite as well. Um, it still stops really good, but it's just one of these things where I replace that stuff and it would stop like pretty much on a dime, which eventually I might, but we'll see. But anyways, let's uh, go behind this thing and start off for y'all. And you can hear the difference in the exhaust from this with the dual exhaust compared to... Hang on. cars i mean as you can see like this one has been modified quite a bit the other car's stock and like what i'm gonna do with the capri it's just gonna be my new daily driver so basically i'm not gonna be doing like a ton of mods to it like i do want to i might change out the exhaust we'll see i don't mind the exhaust tone i just like stitches a lot more um i'm going to definitely swap out that rad because this rad is so small and actually it does make it so that this car heats up quite badly if you're at idle. But this rod is actually bent, which is interesting. Like, this bar should be straight right here, but it's not. And, like, this is only 0.6 of an inch thick. So that's why this car runs really hot. Where this one, because I dealt with the same issues. This one with a two, two and a quarter inch Lillian Global rad. It's aluminum three core. I don't really have any heating issues with this car. I did, however, and you might be wondering what's with the clothespin. Well, the clothespin is actually there for an insulator because I did vapor lock the car a couple weekends ago. So that's all that's for. It's actually an old school sort of trick. 
But, um, yeah, here, let's close the hood on this car. And then, now it's interesting because that one I have to close really hard, but this one, the latch and the hood are in such good shape that I can do this. Because I can just have it down like this and just like that. You know, it takes almost no effort to close this hood compared to that one where I have to slam it. But it's just one of those dealios, but... Uh, yeah, to be honest, I am just so psyched to have this Capri and to have my Mustang. And both of them being inline six is just so damn cool. You know, and there's a lot of people that would suggest me to get rid of the inline six in both of these cars. But I'm not going to do that. This one I'm going to build up. That one, I really just want to just put a header on it. Um, I might convert it to a tube rail car because I have all the parts and it would basically cost me nothing other than I might need to get a throttle cable. Um, and that's it. Like, that's kind of the beauty of, you know, that one. Because And I want to put a limited slip diff in it too. Because I drove around with an open diff in this car and it would suck when the weather got bad. But that one, you know, which has more weight on the back end because it has the hatchback. And like, the thing is, between these two cars, so like the, the Capri is going to have more insulation with the carpets and that sort of thing, and just a little more luxuries, um, or at least look a little more luxurious. And it's cool because like they, it's got a much more aggressive look, which is interesting because when you think of Mercury, what do you think of? You think of just luxury. You don't necessarily think of aggression, but that's what they did with that. And even like with, the, you know, you go back to kind of their first sort of pony car, which was the Mercury Cougar in 1967. And it's still one of my favorite Ford products ever is the 67 to 69 uh, Cougar. I still like the 1970. It just got a little bit of a snout on it that I'm not as big of a fan of. And, you know, and there was a gap in Mercury's lineup for a performance oriented car and the Capri fit that gap, but they only made it from 79 to 1986. Uh, 83 to 86 they made what was called the bubble hatch design and they changed the front grill up uh, They changed the back end like the bumper cover and the tail lights looked entirely different tail lights were much smaller and Also, it had what was called the bubble hatch. So instead of it being a flat hatch. It had a bit of a curve to it um, It gave you more room inside it also improved the aerodynamics from 0.44 to 0.41 um, but it did weigh an extra, I think it was like 60 to 80 pounds, something like that. So there's kind of the downside of it too. But, um, yeah, so anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this. And, you know, it's just one of these things with these two cars. I'm a big fan of both of these cars and I truly can't be happier. I do miss my convertible, but... My convertible was a problem child because actually like she did break down when on you know this would have been on friday when i went up to edmonton it left me stranded on the side of the highway and i had to call ama to trailer back to keith's place and then it's his to deal with now um at this point but the beauty of it though is that i'll be able to go see her still and i'll be able to still drive her too once she's fixed and who knows next time i see her like proper like going down the road it's possible that it might look different too he's not stoked on the white he hates white cars and it's just like because fleet vehicles are white that's his thing so I, I don't mind white on vehicles to be honest there's very rarely a color that i don't like on a vehicle but that's just me but uh yeah so um anyways I think I'll end the video here. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you did, please like the video, comment what you want to see down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as well, if you want to contact me, you can at Katarina's.Garage on Instagram or Katarina's Garage on Facebook. As well, follow me on TikTok at Katarina's.Garage. Anyways, hope you're staying safe during COVID-19. Good luck with what we're working on, and I'll catch you next video. Bye!